I see you. So guys, we're going to talk about uh, GeekCon. We're going to review. We're going to go through the pictures I have and talk about it and, and have some fun. Let me hit a marker. Hey, I know those people. Hey, you do. So this is uh, the opening picture. This is uh, Celeste and I. We had just gotten to our booth. So going on. So this is a booth Celeste and I are at. Uh, it's Hot Wheels, which is a local um, roller skate rink place. But they're having an event pretty soon. Um for wrestling for little people. I'll learn why it's known as I, I'm afraid to say it because I'm afraid I get in trouble. Don't say uh, it. Don't say it. It's actually one of those words that can get you in trouble. Now. That's what I thought. So, but little little people wrestling. Uh that's a thing and that's taking place. And so Celeste, I took a picture in their in their rink they have. Uh and then this is again waiting for the start. Boom, here we go. Right off the bat. All right, so uh, here's a picture of me with a young lady. She's a, a cosplayer. So fun fact, this young lady, Celeste and I met our very first GeekCon, and she was dressed up as animated series Harley Quinn. And uh, she's talented. She has a lot of cool stuff. You'll see her again later. But she was the main character from The Last of Us. And um, Ellie. <laughs> yeah, and what's funny is I was talking to her, and she said that when she was coming up, one security guard was like, are you... Are you are you for the con or do we or do you need help? <laughs> Cause all the blood on her face. It was pretty cool. But she's a cool kid. I like her a lot. She's like, hey, you want to use the bow and arrow? I'm like, can I? I'm trying to figure out how they got allowed to do that. Like I, I, I figured that she would have gotten in trouble for that, but kudos for the for them for letting her through. <laughs> hey, maybe next year I'll bring my crossbow. Oh, there you go. <laughs> all right. So next up we have uh, two uh, devoted geeks. Actually, this is a uh, Wade wearing the what the duck uh, duck shirt, and then our friend Mike, who's actually one of our devoted Patreon geeks, dressed up as Spawn. That dude dropped mega weight to put on this costume. Actually, I was really proud of him. I met him for the first time this year. How'd they go for you? Well, I mean, I, I I met him several times for the first time this year, rather, yeah, uh, because he was at the table quite a bit. Uh, he yeah. was a really he was a really cool guy. So if you're listening, dude. You're a really cool guy. I, I enjoyed having you at the table. So yeah, he's creative. He's working on a comic book actually uh, about a superhero that's from Shreveport. Now, is he a writer or does he do the art or both? Writer, and um, he's got some like he has some major players helping out with production. He's friends with Todd McFarlane. Yo, like, hey, Mike, I do <laughs> a uh, podcast called Playing Games with Strangers, and we've been looking for some comic book outlet for us. So anyways, that being said, uh, oh, Paladin says I need to get over there one year. You do, bud. You do it. So but these guys are cool. Uh, Wade here. Uh, he is a big pop uh, a collector, and he likes to give away pops to people. Uh, and like we already told you about Mike again, he's a uh, he's he's working on a comic book. He's a big collector, dude, like a big collector. And uh, just a really good guy. Both of them are. Uh, I have no idea what this guy's dressed up as. As he may know. I'm waiting for your... Sh oh, there we go. Uh, you know, I've seen it places, and I can't remember where. Like, every time I saw him, and there was a girl that was kind of... That did a feminine version of that mm -hmm. TV person that was walking around. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I didn't ask... I, it, but it was one of those things that's sticking out in the back of my head. Like I've seen that somewhere and I almost wanted to say like, it, it's the Joker from Arkham Asylum at the very end when you go in there and he's I got can the see TV that. on his head. I can but see that. You would, you would think that they would have the Joker on the screen or it would be lit up and their face would be painted as the Joker. Or they'd be wearing make... a purple suit of some sort. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It was cool though. It was a really nice guy. And uh, I talked to him a little bit about, about it. And uh, just genuinely a nice guy. Uh, oh, Mr. Camboy's out. Love you, brother. Take it easy. Uh, Retro says, I support any church uh, telling con goers that Mask of the Phantasm is going to be a person who goes to heaven. Oh, good. I'm glad that you agree with us, Retro. Uh, Dell says he wants to be me TV. <laughs> uh, Celeste goes, I thought it was from Legion. I, I don't know if he's Legion. TV head? Not the real name? I don't know. Val says, it's triggering a lot of, rec of recognition. Right? Right, Falindro? Like, there's something about this that's eerily familiar. And maybe it's all part of that, like, alternate reality that we're all from. I don't know. All right, so this young lady, she's dressed up as Misa Misa from um, Death Note. Super sweet young lady. She comes up, she goes, okay. I go, hey, can I take a picture with you, Misa? She goes, yeah, sure. She goes, you want to hold the apple or do you want the Death Note? I was like, yes, both. So she gave me the <laughs> apple. <laughs> I Okay, so... 
I didn't see this costume, but it must have been shortly after you guys started telling me, John, you really should watch Death yeah. Note. You would really like that show. I've never seen Death Note. I just like I found out that they're doing an anime adaptation of a book series that really? uh, th- uh, that those of us who are on um, We Read Allegedly are super into on right. Netflix. And so I re-upped, I rejoined with Netflix for the first time in five years. And cool. they have Death Note on there with the English dubs. So I am going to give you the three episode rule on that one. So more and, to be two more to come on that front. And maybe a fiver. I don't know. Sure. But how about this? Let me know. And we'll talk about it. <laughs> cool. So uh, it's one of those ones, man. It's great until you're in the last third of the story of the whole story. Um, so yeah, so cast goes as long as she didn't write your name down. She did not, thankfully. So let's goes. I don't know if it's the adaptation, but uh, it's the same mythos. Interesting. All right, let's keep going. Uh, up oh, here we go. A little crowd shot right here of uh, of uh, Branson and his his kiddo, and uh, then uh, there's this crazy guy in the background smiling big. His name is John. In case you guys didn't know who the voice here was, and uh, yeah, just, that's me in the background there. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Dell says, looks like the girl who ate and slept, uh, in a bear's house. <laughs> uh, cool. So here's our family. These are, uh, people from my church. Actually. Uh, this is one of my students and this is her mom. Really great folks. Um, this is, uh, another couple. This is, a uh, Rick. He's one of our pastors at my church and this is his wife. And though, if you notice the shirt, it matches the shirt in the background. That's right. They're wearing our brand new shirts that we have. And, um, Again, we're working on getting on the website, but if you'd like to go ahead and get one, uh, reach out to us privately and uh, we'll make that happen. Uh, Retro and Val will be sending y'all shirts here very shortly. Uh, having to work out some of the shipping stuff, but we are sending those off to you guys hopefully this week. Uh, so Retro goes, oh yeah, when I get mine? Bro, I just told you. <laughs> Rick actually uh, was one of the people who prayed with me when I went to church on Sunday. Oh, cool, man. Dig yeah. it. Dig it. Rick's such a good guy, man. Like he's genuinely yeah. just a nice, nice dude. Yeah, I mean, he, the guy sees me like once a year, maybe once every other year, but he remembers my name better than I remember his. So <laughs> that's fair. He, again, he's just a he's a genuinely nice guy. No, it's interesting. He has been ordained pastor for like 30, 40 years. And it wasn't until he came to the healing place that he did quote unquote traditional ministry stuff. Like he was always just a, an accountant for churches over the years. And uh, man, he is rocking and rolling with our pastoral care team. Like he is just doing amazing things uh oh val says uh so i guess the tv head doesn't actually have a name or really a source just a stock character from a piece of art the game pop culture recognition so more likely than not we have all just seen images of the tv head in a suit okay that's fair that's fair hey you know what val thanks for looking that up for us it's it's really nice to have people look at that stuff because <laughs> i sure wasn't gonna look it up val has often been my my man in the chair at times <laughs> uh okay this guy right here uh his name his uh he is his call his tiktok is called mcnasty and uh he is a local teacher who got famous on tiktok for making story for telling stories about students and uh the the horrors of being a teacher <laughs> And, I've uh, seen a few, I've seen a few of his TikToks before, back when I was still on TikTok, and right. uh, he he would you know it, I when he showed up at the table, I was like, I know him from somewhere. <laughs> I can't put my finger on it. Mm-hmm. And then he told me, oh yeah, he's a local, he's on TikTok, and he's a school teacher. I'm like, oh, I didn't recognize him without his shirt pulled up. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so let's uh, go on. Lee McNasty is his name. All right. And so Paladin says that's ahead. Knight to the Panda and my favorite Viking. Take it easy, brother. Appreciate you. Uh, thanks for acknowledging the Viking hood. <laughs> uh, all right. So this is a young lady. She was kind of cool. She was at a booth that helps out with, um, it's a phone line. It's a phone call. It's a phone line, a uh, hotline that she answers for people who are dealing with gambling issues, but also suicide uh, stuff. And so she works the third shift. So she works from like 11 PM until four or five o'clock in the morning. Woof. Just answering calls to, for people who are just genuinely hurting and, and need some help. So that was a pretty cool conversation with her. Uh, everyone's like, oof, Yeah. Uh, so this guy, he's dressed up as Zorro from one piece, which John, I just heard they're redoing one piece. Uh, 
and <laughs> modern animation and starting from the beginning so maybe have you I'll... watched have you watched the live action yeah i have i just saw a picture of it for the first time today like i said i just got jumped back on it's, netflix it's actually pretty solid like it's one of the few live action adaptations that anime fans are like hey well done thank you for for honoring the the source i don't know i saw a picture of the guy playing you uh luffy and i'm like no thanks I, it's pretty good man i'm telling you uh i'm just saying uh yeah no he wasn't he was with other people but when i got the picture with him uh Cellcast, he was by himself all right uh okay this young lady she is a gender bent version of Jorno from jojo's bizarre adventures and uh that was pretty cool you don't see uh I, there were how do i said i like jojo's bizarre adventures not a lot of people do apparently uh but i enjoy it i think it's fun and so seeing jojo's like last year we saw a lot more of them but i've never seen this person somebody uh, cosplay this one right here so this is a lot of fun to see her do this uh all right john can you guess who this guy is i'm waiting for my screen to update oh. but i'll let you know <laughs> updating okay okay uh is that uh is that morph that's morph all right have you ever seen somebody cosplay morph no i haven't either i was like this is so cool like so original because nobody thinks about morph and so i appreciated this well unless they are just walking around and then they just say they are morph because morph they turned it morph turned into that form i guess you could do that i guess i mean to be fair with shapeshifters, can you ever say anybody is really anybody? I mean, for all we know, Morph is just another shape for Mystique. Yeah, that's a true story. That's a true story. <laughs> Except for I think he fought Mystique once. I don't know. Uh, Val says, I haven't heard much about the One Piece live action. Just uh, uh, took it uh, that it bombed as bad as the others. No, it did really good. Uh, he says, uh, the best live action I've ever seen were the Ronin Kitchen. I still need to see those Ronin Kitchen movies. I've been I've been sketchy about those um they look like they might be fun all right so this one uh i love this one for multiple reasons one uh this is one of my students so a lot of love there but it's a low-key um uh minion costume and uh I, I, was, see that. I was like come on sis rock that. i i appreciate low-key cosplays like to me i think those are some of the best when somebody's like they just like you look at him like are you doing this like yes i am <laughs> you know I got a lot of respect for that whole situation. Uh, Cellcast goes, Minion. Dale goes, or could be Mork from Orc. Are you talking about Morph? Uh, Jacob is in the chat. Pick one, Liberty versus Appalachian State. I have no idea, my friend. Yeah, it's kind of off, off topic, my dude. <laughs> in the left field. <laughs> I want to make sure you're a person. <laughs> I've seen Jacob in the chat before. Okay. Yeah. No, this says this is his first time chat, it says. Oh, interesting. Maybe I've seen somebody else named Jacob. Yeah, I can't there's pick one. For there's a lot of people named Jacob. <laughs> All right, so this is another one. Uh, this is a uh, SoCal Scott with the Bat Sands. Uh, this is uh, a uh, one of my students also. This is the Minions brother. Uh, this guy is a really cool guy. And... So for those of you who enjoyed the live stream where we play Deer Simulator, it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that goes, you should do this one. And I was like, bet, bet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Retro says, uh, world without Mask of Phantasm or world without tacos. No, did you, did you just offer me death or cake? <laughs> death or cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so goes uh it's uh like a game name that cosplay right exactly all right so this one is not a cosplay this is a friend of mine from high school uh he and i were part were one of three people who fenced saber on the fencing team and so we hung out a lot he's a really really cool dude he is a big big green lantern fan to the point john that his senior class ring was the Green Lantern ring. It was That's a pretty slick, a gold Green Lantern ring with a green crystal in the middle. And you, uh, know, what else, you know what else this picture can do? Um, what's that? 
you remember those uh, things that they used to have that they, those pictures they used to post on uh, the socials where it's like when you see it. Yep. <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I assure everybody it was completely unintentional. <laughs> just creeping up there. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> So, because well, it could be morph. It could have been morph. You're right. Uh, oh, here we go. Some of you guys who remember Kelsey. Uh, this was her. She was dressed up as uh, Zenitsu from Demon Slayer. And uh, this pop right here, she was going to get uh, the voice actress to sign uh, there. Uh, I think you had the same voice actress sign your uh, Pachito. Pachito. Yep. Yeah. So, but Kelsey was there. I was really sweet to see her. Uh, this guy was cool. He's part of the 501st, which is a group of professional, I say professional cosplayers. They're cosplayers that do Star Wars, but to be part of the group, your costume has to be movie accurate. And so super intense. But this guy was really cool. Uh, I like these guys. We talked about these in the podcast. Make sure you guys go check out Com Talk. Uh, I called them GI Mando. They were actually, these are actual army guys. They're they recruiting, but they did it all up with their army uh, stuff. And so I respected that. Uh, did they know, ever run into the, uh, the five Oh first or whatever they're called? I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did run into the five Oh first. Um, and the way Mandalorian armor works, this could actually, uh, pass. I think it's Mandalorian armor, except for the fact he's got the American flag here. Yeah. So, so this guy right here, uh, John, do you know who this guy is? Mm, I don't. Well, updating, updating, updating. Yep, there we are. We are updated. Uh, you talking about the dude? The dude. I was the one who called him out. I know. <laughs> so Casco's the, the dude. This guy the dude was. Abides. This guy was super cool. Like he embodied the dude. A little less stoned, uh, sounding, but he was genuinely just a nice guy, and um, uh, I appreciated him. Like he spent time just chatting about just how people responded to it. So I appreciated that. Yeah, he was a re like true to character. And I don't even think he was trying to be the character so much, but like he was super chill and he was cool to talk about whatever. Yeah, definitely. Uh, group shot of uh, Celeste and John talking with a group of folks. All right. So I'm not sure who this guy in the middle is, but this is a guy named Stefan. Stefan is a, uh, we met Stefan, one of our first geek cons. See him every year. We're friends with him on Facebook. Really cool guy. <laughs> he was, he goes, he, he does a series of pictures. You know how I do my, uh, the reactions to, to energy drinks on social media, John, where it's like a picture of the item and I'm looking at it and, and responding to it. Mm -hmm. Hey Ash, thanks for the sub sis. Appreciate it. He took that and ran with it. He's like, yeah, you inspired me to do that. I was like my dude, rock it out, man. But uh, he was Robin, and uh, look, there's John again. Less creepy. <laughs> yeah, that one was an intentional photo bomb, right? Uh, Bobo says, "Did the dude have a rug that really uh, pulled the room together?" <laughs> he did not. He he was not walking around with that. Uh, he was looking for it, and it certainly wasn't in the toilet. But if you stick his head back in there, he can definitely check again. <laughs> All right, this is a cool one for me too. This young man. Uh, is a young man that I met when he was a child. He was in my kids' church, and uh, he's dressed up as uh, as Miles Morales, and uh, just a cool kid. He's really neat, and um, we run into him every so often. And uh, just just genuinely, like he's got a, a kind heart, a kind spirit about him. And so this was cool to see him uh, as we wrapped up Friday, and that was just Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about Saturday now. Boom. All right, here we are back at the uh, the booth with Celeste and I. This is cool. Um, these two young ladies we met last year. Uh, they were dressed up low-key Ninja Turtles and April O'Neil. And um, these shirts are from... Um, oh, Percy Jackson. Yes, thank you, John. This is why I have you on here, so I don't look like an idiot. Uh, Percy I do a Jackson. book podcast. It's what you pay me for. <laughs> it's a true story. I pay you nothing. Um... Anyways, Percy Jackson and very sweet young ladies. Fun fact: um, her, uh, the one on the right, her dad is uh, his name is Cole, and he was the uh, the cat the camp 
nurse for track, which for those of you who, are, who have been around, you know, track teen reach adventure camp is the camp for foster kids. Her dad did that really, really great family. I appreciated them a lot. Young lady doing Harley Quinn. And we have Mario getting ready in the background awkwardly <laughs> yeah well i mean at least he had a shirt on for that picture at least he did because <laughs> there was a moment where he didn't have a shirt on during the, the convention well i mean when when he was doing that one where i i don't remember what he was oh yeah he did uh that driving game he oh sweet uh, tooth. Twisted, twisted metal, metal. twisted metal yeah, and yeah. He, he was he was shirtless the entire day <laughs> the entire day all right so here's the lomax family right here um, Lady Lomax and Mr. Lomax uh, as Harry Potter and uh, again they've been part of Geek Devotions for a very very long time uh, this one right here I love this one right here this young lady we met her and uh, she almost passed out at our booth <laughs> okay that's the one okay yeah, yeah. and uh, really sweet young lady she, uh, she works with kids here locally uh, but just the mask was super hot. So we uh, we gave her some water and she hung out and chatted for a good while. Very sweet young lady. And uh, hopefully we get to see her again sometime. But really fun. I loved her cosplay. Like, I thought this was like, like, this is not a hard cosplay to put together. Like, it worked really well. She had some some, uh, some really cool uh, pants on with some cargo. She got a nice jacket uh, with a hood. And uh, she got a, a, a red hood sweatshirt. I mean, this is a great simple to put together cosplay and like we take the mask off man she rocked it out like this is something you could just wear out and it'd be cool so i don't know if i could pull it off because i'm fat but she looked amazing in it as a gender bent red hood all right this guy <laughs> did you see this guy at the con um i did not so <laughs> I was like, bro, where did you get the Lapras hat? And he goes, well, actually, it's actually a a, a, um, a tissue dispenser. You <laughs> you wrap, you put it on top of a tissue tissue dispenser, and the tissues come out of the back of the Lapras. And he's like, I'm just gonna put it on the hat. And so that's what he did. Nice. I was like, I respect that, sir. I respect that a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Oh, got another one of B and another one of his little ones uh, with his uh, Thundercat sword. That was cool. Was this Thundercat sword one or two? Uh, two. It was two at that point. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. For those of you who missed it, Branson got one of those really cool, like, like 3D printed, like extended bull swords. And unfortunately, the first one broke. So he got a second one. <laughs> All right, this is cool. Uh, this young, this lady and, and this gentleman, uh, they actually follow us on on uh, Facebook. So if I post this on Facebook, hello, uh, hello. <laughs> but she was dressed up uh, from Star Trek, and they got the triples, uh, which it's funny because like I think people forget about the triples, and uh, and so it was cool to see that. Uh, Bob says, well, oh, I mean, that is triples. the trouble with triples. That is true. That is true. Oh my gosh. Uh, all right. How is your Star Wars knowledge, John? Yeah, it depends on if you're talking about George Lucas Star Wars or Disney Star Wars. I'm talking about it was during the era of the George Lucas Star Wars. No, well, I will tell you that this guy looks familiar, but I couldn't place him. This is Revan, which uh, if you ever played the um, Knights of the Old Republic games. Oh. Okay, yeah, you lost me as soon as you brought in video games. I thought we were talking <laughs> cinematic universe. Oh, uh, yes, but also the books. And uh, this was a really cool cosplay. This guy did a really good job. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, so Casco's Darth Revan. Absolutely, got it. All right, this is another one. Valindro, we need your help. We summon thee. What is this character? I have no idea who this guy is. I stopped him. His mask looked cool. His sword was pretty neat. We have no idea what he's cosplaying as. John, do you know? Um, well, I mean, his mask reminds me of Squid Game, but outside of that, no. <laughs> Can somebody please help us out? It was just a cool cosplay, but I have no idea what's happening here. All right. All right, this guy right here. This guy was really neat. I stopped talking with him for a little bit. 
Uh, oh, Baba says, is that from Final Fantasy VII and that crazy, stupid big blade? It's not that. No, so it's I, not the Buster Sword. Yeah. Uh, so, goes, okay, he's carrying a Buster Sword from FF7, but I'm lost after that. It's not the Buster Sword, though. Like, the Buster Sword was silver. This is clearly black and red. So, it's not that. All right, so this guy, he was pretty cool. We were talking to him. And we're like, okay, man, what are you, what are you doing? And so what do you think I'm cosplaying as? I was like, you kind of look like adult Harry Potter. Or you kind of look like, like uh, not Harry Potter, but like the guy from uh, uh, the prequel to Harry Potter, the mysterious beast and whatever it is. And he goes, I can see that, but he's actually working on, he was trying to be uh, Harry Potter as an adult, which I'm okay. like, I, I respect the hustle. I, not the hustle. I respect the upgrade. I, I can uh, I can I can dig that. I was more thinking like Doctor Who in the Harry Potter universe. Funny thing you said that. We said the same thing. And Cellcast goes, is he the fourth doctor? Not the fourth doctor. I see the hair, but the suit's not crazy enough. But we were talking about that. And he goes, Yeah, I can see this being a hair. It's very Doctor Who-ish. And so we're joking with him about having a getting a sonic screwdriver, and he just wear the same thing one day after the other. So but yeah. I, I thought it was cool though. Really nice guy though. Super kind. Okay, here's a thought. Yeah. What if what if uh what if the doctor is actually just a rogue wizard and his <laughs> wand and, and the sonic screwdriver is just his wand? That would be interesting. Um I don't know what in the Harry Potter world would constitute the regeneration, but that would be an interesting fan theory for sure. Oh, I mean horcruxes, man. Talk to me like I'm stupid. Uh, the things that uh, that Voldemort left around parts of his soul in. Oh. I so that would be that. regeneration. I guess so. Uh, oh, Valon's getting back to us. He reminds me of the Fantastic Beasts Newt. Yeah, that's what we said too, Valendro. Val, did you hear our... Oh, wait. Uh, looks like one of... The, all right, so Val says the helmet for the other guy looks like one of those generic ones I see on Amazon with a repainted Buster Sword. So everyone's pretty much like, ah, it's uh, just a OC thing. I dig it. Uh, Val says the doctor was certainly split his soul enough. <laughs> well, that's true. All right. So B with uh, Lion Sword and uh, young, Youngest B with the thing. Ah, we got this gentleman. We got, a, we got a celebrity in the house. The man, the myth, the legend, Dale, was up there cosplaying out. I was laughing at his wig the entire time. <laughs> I have never seen Dale with curly hair, John, and it was killing me. He had it on for two days, bro. He was Gilligan the day before. (laughs) He was killing me with it. (laughs) He wasn't Gilligan. He was something something else. But, uh, yeah, it was great. (laughs) It was great, man. All right. Please tell me, John, you know what this guy's cosplaying as. Uh, yeah, he's uh, the dude from Hitchhiker's Guide. My dude, that's right. He remembered his towel. He remembered his towel, Arthur freaking Dent, which I have a lot yeah. of love for this because that was my first cosplay. I'm not gonna yeah, lie, I was about to say you did that same cosplay at one point. I remember I did. that. Everyone was like, "Are you okay, sir? Are you homeless?" I'm like, "Well, my or whole, they, like it got or they thought you were the dude, <laughs> or they thought I was the dude." Also, yeah. Uh, so this goes. He was Martin from the race cartoon. Oh, that's right. It was Martin. That's what Dell was that first day. All right. This is cool. I, I genuinely love this. This is Professor Oak, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this guy is super kind. And uh, he's part of a family that we see every year at GeekCon. You'll see him and his family later. And we've literally seen them since our first GeekCon. Super great, nice folks. <clears throat> he, uh, But he's Professor Oak. And... He doesn't talk a lot. I don't know if he's just super shy or what, but he's got, he just had these signs. So he didn't have to talk. <laughs> it was just like exactly like the video game. So this is great. I love this guy so much. This guy from Jujutsu Kaisen. This is guy. He's also part of that family that we talked, that we told you guys about. Uh, you'll see him again on day three, uh, dressed up as Terry from uh, Fatal Fury. But again, just super great guys. He's actually a cop. You're right, John. 
Yeah, it's just you brought up Terry from Fatal Fury, and I boned that <laughs> so bad. All right, I need to get this out now before we get there, just so when we get there, I won't feel so embarrassed. But <laughs> Homeboy shows up at the table dressed up like Terry from Fatal Fury. Me, I was more of a Streets of Rage fan back right. in the day, and I'm like, hey, that's a sweet Axel outfit. <laughs> Bro didn't. Bro was so kind. He didn't call me out on my bungle, and he's just like, "Oh, hey, thanks, man," and just kind of left at that. But I'm just like, and then after I didn't realize what I had done until the day after. I think I was at your house when I realized it. I'm like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh, he again. These are this family is just super super kind, and uh, I, I I love the fact that unless I get to meet up with them every year at the con. Uh, because again, they're just real gracious and kind every single time. Uh, Baba says Streets of Rage 2 rules. That was a good game. All right, here's it's, a group of, huh? Oh, I was just gonna, I was just gonna throw it out there that uh, Streets of Rage 2 is currently on the Super Nintendo of the NSO right now. So it's a true story. It's a true story. All right, so we have a, a grouping of, um, uh, Catwoman from Batman Returns. We have a Harley Quinn and we have a Poison, Poison Ivy. Ivy. I thought it was cool. I, I, I thought this she was trying to rock out like Poison Ivy plus a uh, little shop of horrors, but it wasn't. But it could have been. I'm actually thinking like it'd be kind of cool if she had like a little lever in the in the pole so the mouth opened up and closed. That would have been hysterical. Bro, you just gave me an idea for my third my third cosplay for next year <laughs> i'm gonna dress up like seymour oh yeah <laughs> i'll have to shave off my goatee for that though oh man have i might have kevin dress up I, as a, a big plant feed me I'm, seymour <laughs> yo i can i can do all my shaved face cosplays for that i'll do seymour i'll do the greatest american hero and then of course me and kevin are gonna do daft punk there you go so you i go. can have shaved face for all of those then that's it. Uh, Selkaz goes, that would be Audrey 2. Ah. All right. Please tell me you recognize this cosplay. John. Waiting for my screen to change. Yeah. Um, ooh, I need this. I need a closer look at his accessories, me thinks. <laughs> Just look at the face, John. Oh, he's, he's doing MASH. Yep, he's MASH. Uh, Marshall, I thought it was cool. He's a cool guy. This guy right here, he was doing Two Face, and the eye trips me out. I was like, "Hey man, can I get a shot with you?" Yeah, sure. And he pulls out the eyepiece. He's like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> yeah, that that's commitment because to how to hold one of those in place would kill my eyes. Oh my gosh! I again, cosplay is I respect it. I respect it. Uh, so let's go shoe cream. And then uh, shoe Gass cream, funky love. So guess goes, well, Jessica uh, rabbit was behind him. She was, she was right behind him. All right. All right. This guy right here, I recognize his cosplay. And I think he was super excited because nobody else was recognizing it. So I got to know, John, do you recognize this cosplay? Is that solid snake? Yep. He is dressed up as Snake and uh, super. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he wanted to do the second pose right here. Super nice guy. It's uh, again, he was super excited. Somebody recognized him and uh, it was a lot of fun. I saw it. I was, I was laughing. I was like, hey, look, man, just let you know right now. If I see a box moving, I'm going to kick it. <laughs> I'm just going to say I feel pretty proud of myself for, for catching that considering I've I have yet to play a Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid game ever. Oh, man. Solid 5 is one of my favorites. I enjoy it. Val Indra says, how did no one recognize that? I don't know, Val. I really don't know. But he said that people were like, what are you? Um, so I recognize it. I thought it was cool. So Val, you're 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 a, in the know about the games. How is it worth getting the uh, solid, Metal Gear Solid uh, Collection 1? Is it worth getting that? Let me know, bro. God, I've been looking at that too. Let right? me know too. <laughs> Let us all know. Uh, Bob I, would... I'd play. I'd play that on my Switch. Yeah, I, I, is it on Switch? I thought it was only on PlayStation. No, they got it for Switch too. Oh. Uh, but you, you got to remember, um, Metal Gear started out as a Nintendo property. Oh yeah, yeah. My first exposure to it though was PlayStation. 
Like, well, that was most people's, but yeah, the there was decision. at Walmart. There was there was two there was two Metal Gears on the original NES that I can recall. Yeah. Val says if you like game style, if you like that game style, then yeah, it's a classic, but it's hard like any other old game. That's true. All right, so this one, Celeste was excited about this, and she was, Celeste is super awkward, you guys know that. She doesn't like getting out of her bubble too much. And she was hoping and praying this young lady to walk her away so that she can get a picture with her. Because this is a character from the DLC of Splatoon 3. And those of you who don't know, Celeste loves the mess out of that game. That's one of her favorite games is Splatoon. And so the girl was walking away. I was like, babe, you're going to have to go stop her. I can't do it because it looks weird for me to go stop her, but you need to. So she went and got her to take a picture with her. And it was, it was great. It literally made Celeste's day that day. <laughs> so young lady, whoever's cosplaying is this. Thank you for making my wife's day. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Uh, got a ginger bit in Nosuke, And uh, this is cool. Again, she was super excited and, I love I love taking pictures with young cosplayers because they get hyped that somebody recognizes them and wants to do it. So this was a pretty neat little experience right here. Have you watched Demon Slayer, John? Yeah. Okay, cool. I haven't made it past the Mist Hashira just because that guy bores me. <laughs> I get that. I get that. All right, so this is a cool one. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Josh. And if I post it on Facebook, you'll see it. Josh is one of our devoted geeks. He's in our comment section often. And uh, he was there at the con. He was uh, with somebody who was running the veterinarian group. And uh, he came by and say hi. So, hey, Josh. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Appreciate it. Look, you made the show, bro. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is cool. These three young men, they are students in another town. Uh, their youth pastor is an old friend of mine. And he told them to come say hi. So that was nice. Not going to lie. Homeboy looks a little bit like that guy from... Uh from um stranger things i can't remember his name now eddie oh yeah he does doesn't he i can see that I can see that all right ladies and gentlemen this is a cool story john who's this young lady uh her name is liz yeah and she was one of the coolest people to come up to the table and i'm gonna let you tell the story because you were a little bit more hands-on with the story than i was i was more of an close uh, observer but this is this was a fantastic story and this you, you can hear about it on the recent com talk as well yeah so basically she came by our booth and uh really kind and uh just super super nervous like like we could tell like she was super nervous she's looking at our stuff and so we're telling her she's like are you guys godly i was like well yeah we're godly and she's like i guess i need a little more godly in my life i'm not really i was like okay and so we're talking and but uh she um uh, built this whole suit of armor by herself and it was her first time doing a full body armor cosplay and she drove all the way from monroe to be part of this competition and she was nervous to the nth degree like super super nervous and so the guys and i are just talking to her and just encouraging her and saying like how great it was and and encouraging her on, on the on the work she's put into it excuse me and and she shared about some other personal struggles that she had some things that she was dealing with and so we got to just love on her for a moment, encourage her and say, and, uh, and we're told, Hey, look, you know, you really need to go talk to, to John down at the other end. Uh, who's the, was the, the mid John, John Stout, not me. Yeah. John Stout and talk to him. And, and, uh, it was just really cool. Got to the chance to encourage her and she ended up winning the cosplay competition, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, that was, that was super neat. Her Facebook page the next day, like her personal one. She had posted up the picture of her in her cosplay, and she goes, today was a dream. And I was like, I'm so proud of you, sis. I was so excited for her. And uh, again, this is why we're there. Is She was literally just a nervous wreck, and we got to be our part. Several people were there. There were several people in the process of just encouraging her and being part of that process. I'm just glad that we were able I to be happen, a small part of that. I happened to be in the in the actual room when... Because the the con the actual contest was long and hot and sweaty, mm. Mm. and it smelt that way in there. So I only dipped in for the judging of that for probably about five minutes. But I happened to be in there when she crossed the stage, and I'll tell you what, she struck that pose like uh, like she knew what she was doing, and she didn't seem to have any fear going <laughs> into it. So that's like, so cool. She rocked it out hard. That's it. That's what's up. Come on now. All right, here's old Kevo. Dressed up or uh, sitting next to uh, Godzilla, which he was just super excited about, obviously, because Kevo is a big Godzilla fan. Yeah. 
Uh, -bum -bum. We got over here with Jafar and um, Jasmine, which made me feel uncomfortable about that. But, you know, do you, do you guys? Uh, and then over here we have Mike dressed up as Wolverine. Bro had the best claws there out of every Wolverine I saw. He did. Got a picture of it right here. And this is Mike and this is his girlfriend. And she was dressed up as Lady Deadpool. And, they were, and speaking of the claws, like here, like they look pretty good coming out of my hands right there. Like I respected the hustle, man. Those are, those are cool looking outfit they got going on. It was hot as a Dickens though in that costume, he said. Like he was really sweating hard in it. I, bro, I was sweating hard no matter what I was doing there. <laughs> Y'all, let me let me tell you, when we Dallas asked Kevin and I to help set up prior to the con, oh and we goodness. walked and we walked, they did not, they did not have the AC on while the <laughs> while the stands were doing setup. I'm telling you now. And like y'all were setting some heat records on top of the, your normal humidity. And I had a veritable weather system under my shirt by the time we walked out of there from setup. You're not wrong. You're not wrong about that. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Up oh, here we go. The family picture. Let's go. So this is the family we told you guys about. We got the dude from Jujutsu Kaisen, Professor Oak, and then these two right here. So when we first met them, it was just these three, right? And he would normally play um uh cloud and he had the buster sword and he would normally do amando and then he would be johnny bravo and you see how big he is like he's a oh. big man oh. Oh. <laughs> and then this is his bride uh who he flew all the way to australia to go propose and to marry uh and uh so they're dressed up as uh lloyd forger and your forger uh from spy family and then they have Anya here. And uh, Celeste was super excited to have Anya on her shoulder. And uh, again, this go back and watch Geek Devotions, guys, for reals. And check out our intro for the last several years. In our intro for the last several years, our picture with them is in there. Like, that's it's just been a thing for us. I, I haven't had a chance to adjust the new one yet, but they're, they're, they're part of the process now. <laughs> All right, here goes Stefan again. Yeah, he's dressed up as X, I think is the name of the character. And it's uh, Robin's uh, dark alter ego from Teen Titans. And uh, what's cool is that X on his chest, John, it, it's held on by magnets. Like, you can take it off and throw it if he wants to. Oh, well, you know, or X going to give it to you. <laughs> uh, here's one of John took of uh, me. Uh Getting uh, something signed by um, a Bob former, Lilly. Bob Lilly, former Dallas Cowboy, Mr. Cowboy himself. Uh, this is me holding the uh, Dark Saber from Star Wars. Uh, Sam, our friend that we told you guys about earlier, he bought that. And this is Sam dressed up as Indian Jones, which he does every single year. Uh, it was funny. There was one year that him, a young lady named Sam, an, who uh, her name was also Sam, and then another friend of ours. Uh, they did the um, the the three Spider Man pose, like you know how you got three Spider Mans looking at each other. Well, all three of them were dressed up as Indiana Jones, and they were all doing that pose together. So that was kind of fun. Oh, here's Cole. This is the guy I told you about, uh, John. That his daughters were uh, found us on the on the first day that they they had the uh, Percy Jackson shirt. Cole actually, John, was uh, sat in on our panel that we led a couple years ago. Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, he super appreciated that. I'd love to do another one. Yeah, same. Actually, uh, you know what my you know what my dream is for for a geek con, and maybe you can talk to them. Like, okay. if we could pick a movie and do a live taping of the bottom shelf. Oh yeah. For, for a uh, thing, <laughs> we got to talk to those guys at Gabe's Cave. Apparently, they're the ones that handle all that stuff this year. Now that sounds like you know who to talk to. Then why don't you get on there? <laughs> I gotta find out who these guys are. So this is Celeste with Deadpool, who you guys will hear on the latest episode of The Bottom Shelf. Uh, he was working the man-made uh, soap uh, table. Big shout out to man-made soap, by the way. And I, I did this on my Facebook. I don't plug a lot of things. Right. But those guys were super cool, and the soap is super good. So <laughs> It's super good. And so, All right. This one right here. <laughs> Celeste felt, always feels bad about this one. Uh, oh, what's happening with my screen over here? There it is. Um, so this young lady here, she is dressed up as a character from the video game, Little Nightmares. 
Celeste and I saw her last year in the same way that she, just like last year, Celeste goes, oh my gosh, you're Coraline. She's like, no, I'm not Coraline. <laughs> I felt so bad. Well, this young lady, she actually works for a local animation studio and uh, we met her on Friday night and uh, really sweet young lady, very, very talented. And uh, she kept coming by our booth the entire time, just showing us the cool stuff. It was it was neat to just kind of be part of the con experience for her. And uh, again, just very talented, very sweet young lady. Uh, oh, there we go. Who's this guy, John? This uh, this uh, very purpley looking man. Uh, yeah, that's going to be an Illithid, otherwise known as a Mind Flayer from Dungeons and Dragons. Right. And who's the man behind the mask? That is John Stout. He is a new friend of mine that I made at the con this year. He <laughs> does, he works with a cosplay studio. I can't remember what it's called. Sorry, John. Um, but I am hoping to have him and a few more con friends next year do a uh, off mic Call of Cthulhu one shot when nice. we're not at the uh, con. Yeah. Super nice guy. He was the actually the one of the main judges for the cosplay competition and just that people called him the con dad because he was fixing people's costumes. He had water back there for people. Like he was just a genuinely nice and sweet guy. And so I appreciate him being there. Uh, young lady, she's dressed up as a character from my hero academia. Uh, so that was pretty cool. I called her icy hot, which is one of the nicknames they have for her character. And so she, she really appreciated that. <laughs> uh, all right. So John question. Uh, okay. do you, a, do you recognize these characters and do you recognize the person on the left? I will say that I, one, I don't watch my hero academia, but I know that they're from that. Right. Um, and the person on your left, you're talking about the woman cause that's who's on your left, but she's on the right side of the picture, right? The left side of the screen, uh, the left side of the screen. That's going to be the dude. No, I don't recognize him. Yeah. <laughs> it's the dude, right? Yeah. Uh, so cast, they're both all, yeah, they're both all might. This is deep powered all might. And then she's a gender bent all might, but yeah, it's the, it's the dude. And again, the guy's just super kind. Like, I don't know who you are, sir. If you watch this video, but you are legitimately just a cool dude. And I appreciated you the entire time. All right. Uh, let's see here. Celeste and, and I with uh, the all mites had to get in there. And then uh, we got a, a group shot of, uh, of, of me, Kevin and uh, pointing out John in the background. <laughs> he was balancing my head on his finger. Is what he was doing. <laughs> oh my gosh. This young lady, uh, she is a cosplayer, and uh, we have seen her for several years in a row. Super sweet, super, super kind, and she always has these very beautiful, very elegant cosplays. Uh, last year, she was Freddy Fazbear, actually. It was interesting. Uh, but she she really appreciates Geek Devotion. She comes to our, she came to our booth just to say hi and everything like that, but super kind. And, uh, oh, there's John. Where? Right there. Oh, my screen hasn't changed oh. yet. <laughs> yep, John sitting oh, there. Oh, there out. I am. That 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 is that is a picture of me decompressing. <laughs> yeah. It it can definitely. That was one thing that we tried to do with our booth is for it to be a decompression chamber. Like so that's what I sometimes go and and chill out. And over the years, we've had a couple other people who have just kind of used our booth to uh, chill out. Baba goes John as John. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't actually cosplayed at GeekCon this year at, so far, but I have ideas for next year. So Right. So here's a group shot that Kevin got of us just chatting with uh, Wade and uh, just chilling at the booth. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. And this is me talking with somebody um, at the booth. <laughs> uh, this is a cool one that Kevin got. This is a guy dressed up as Batman who has a mustache. And uh, this is a really cool action shot that he got of the guy. And this guy right here, I love this man. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Roland Stinkin' Paris. Roland is a Marvel Comics uh, artist, and he's worked with other stuff over the years, and he's super talented. And what I love about him is he's just nice. Like, Roland's just a nice and kind dude. And in a world where you have celebrities and people who think they're all that, it's refreshing to have somebody who's just genuine. Um, he is a music nut. Like he, he knows his music inside and out. He's an old rocker. 
uh, I was talking with him uh, actually when this picture was taken when uh, he uh, he was saying that uh, if you were if you had a choice to get rid of art or music he would get rid of art because he loves music so much and uh, I'm just telling you Roland's a good guy and if you guys are ever at a con you see him talk to him uh, if you can get a commission from him Branson got a commission from him actually and it was pretty cool so uh, this is me talking with uh, with Dale, and then we have the young lady dressed up as the uh, Little Nightmares character, and then I don't know what you're doing here, John. What is happening in this picture here, bro? Uh, your the Twitch screen froze for me, so I'm I'm trying to refresh it real quick. Oh no! All right, here we go. Uh, I was probably talking to somebody. <laughs> you are like really into the conversation. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Uh, you can, I think I'm talking to whomever that was in the in the shirt that was to the left of Dale. Yeah, that's the girl that's dressed up uh, as the character from Little Nightmares. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I think it was at that point she was calling Celeste out to me saying, she's gotten it t- wrong twice. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I know you're from a video game and I know it's one of those dark ones that are kind of like Limbo or Inside, but the name's not coming to me and she appreciated that i knew approximately where but i couldn't put a name to it so right yeah we can have i uh yeah <laughs> all right so we have uh you and celeste now on the screen i look so happy you do hey you're on the screen too it's all three of us yeah look at that uh dale all posted up Bro is going to go box somebody in that little uh, <laughs> ring there. Picture of Cole getting at the booth with uh, the family. This is a cool picture. You and uh, Celeste at the Stream Memorial Library with a sign that says Team Audiobooks. Now, why why in the world would you guys do a Team Audiobook post like that? All right. So, like, well, when we first got, we first showed up because Kevin spun the prize wheel when I was walking by for me and I won a free book. You know, it was a free, I got, it was a really slick, uh, dragons comic book thing. Mm -hmm. So I brought it back to y'all's table and I said, Hey Celeste, I know you're into dragons. I think you'll appreciate this more than me. And she's like, I know the perfect person. I'm like, cool. (laughs) She's like, where did you get this? And I took her back there. And so she went and got some more books. Uh, and then I didn't notice those, those signs, but Celeste said, come over here and hold this up and stand by this next to me. I read it just briefly. Uh, The thing is, is okay. So Celeste and I are a part of another podcast called we read allegedly with squid. Right. And, um, there has been conversations, uh, as, and we're all, we all are on the same side of this, but it's a conversation that does come up from time to time on whether or not audiobooks are really reading or if it's just, you know, yeah. Like, listen, and uh, the, the where we fall down on this is that o- oral traditions, or rather, oral and aural traditions, have been passed down for millennia prior to the written word. Right. And so, to 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 exclude the idea that oral storytelling is invalid by comparison to the written word is simply incorrect because you're basically saying that all oral tradition that happened prior to that is irrelevant because it wasn't written down. Right. And, and that's, that's not true. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is that the uh, Pentateuch was, um, was, uh, was passed down orally prior to Moses putting it down on, well, tablet, not paper, but still. Right. So. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Looks like Bob was in agreement with you too. Also in the chat. Um, so yeah, team audiobook. It's, it's, no shame, guys. No shame. Uh, this is cool. Uh, this guy, he's dressed up as Ichigo uh, from uh, Bleach, which Celeste and I love dearly. And this is actually a guy that we've met before. Really nice dude. Another conversation that y'all th- tried to throw a anime at me, and I'm like, nah, that that that's over a thousand episodes, bro. It's, I it's not over a thousand episodes. You go look it up and get back to me and tell me that. Oh, hold on. Let me look it up. How many episodes are in bleach 366 oh what was i looking <laughs> at the head over a thousand then one uh uh probably um bleach not bleach but one punch 
what not one punch one not punch, one punch. Man's uh, only had... i was reading the screen i'm sorry uh one piece oh yeah that's probably bob bobo's trying to be all practical <laughs> for me right now and one I, a day. I, ain't ha- I ain't having it dude i can't watch every single anime people recommend to me do you know like do you know how many animes people try to recommend to me <laughs> It is legitimately a challenge to watch all the, like there's so many out there that I want to watch. You're like, oh, you need to watch this. Like, I can't. I'm trying. Like, and, and part of it is just like, it's there's the excitement. It was easier to watch everything people said because we only got so much stateside. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, unless your friend had T1 internet access and he was making you stuff illegally, you were only able to get so much. But I get it. I totally get it. Uh, Val says, if you are going to decry audiobooks, you may as well uh, decry teachers, preachers, and other uh, presenters for any function as they are literally oratory pre- uh, pre- uh, processors. Absolutely. You're right. Uh, Bob says, I agree. Uh, I'll agree to not watch if John doesn't watch. <laughs> I mean, you watch whatever you want to watch, my dude. Uh, it's just, for me, it's more a matter of I have to invest in what genuinely catches my interest because i just don't got time to dabble in a whole lot of stuff and then i lose track of what's going on in the stuff that i do want to pay attention to that's fair i think i think it will grab your attention i'm old i'm old and it's hard for me to focus on things anymore so (laughs) i respect that hey speaking of people telling story uh doing oratory stories uh celeste with the old man from the princess bride that was cool i've never seen anybody cosplay that before have you no, I haven't. And I, to be perfectly honest, I love deep cuts like this because it shows a certain thought process to what they're doing. They're trying to do something unique rather than something that's everyone else is trending doing. at the moment. Yeah, yeah, totally get that. Uh, Celeste with the greatest superhero of all the in all the world, what a burger man! Uh, I want He's now. my hero. <laughs> I need a Whataburger right now. Uh, okay, so y'all, y'all pray for me. Because, like, I come down there and Whataburger's my jam and Johnny's is my jam. We got none of that up here. We have no Whataburger. We have no Johnny's. The nearest the nearest Popeye's is, like, literally 50 miles away. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, like, all the stuff I love to eat when I'm down in Shreveport, I can't have. Like I blew, I blew Dallas and Kevin's mind when I told them we do not have, we no, nobody up here sells fried okra. Right. Like I flipping love fried okra. (laughs) Don't get it. (laughs) Never can have it. Right. Hey, I just want to throw you this out there for you from the Whataburger website. You can order their ketchup, their jalapeno ranch, their honey barbecue, their mustard, uh, and their pancake mix. Bro, I want a Whataburger. I mean, I get it. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. But those are options are available to you. I got my spicy ketchup koozie from the Geek Con, though, and I've been <laughs> using it religiously with all my with all my uh, flavored seltzers up here. I so. respect that. So the moral of the story is Whataburger, you need to move to Washington State. And if you'd like to, uh, reach out to us at geekdevotions at geekdevotions at gmail.com and uh, let us know if you want to sponsor us. Facts. <laughs> it, 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 funny, funny story, though, as long as we're talking about this, because I did check, and you'll hear him on the recent uh, post-con uh-huh. bottom shelf episode, but I did talk to the guy who owns Johnny's and I'm like, I, I'm just so stressed because I, I love Johnny's, but I never get to eat, to eat where you're at. Right. He's like, and, and everybody at the stand looks at me, where are you at? Like they're planning like, like, Hey, let's open a store where you're at. And I'm like, I'm in Washington state. And everybody's like, Oh, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Dale's let us know he was Marvin from super friends uh, that day. Uh, and Val says, uh, we just got a Whataburger late last year and it is not close to me. So I don't get to get it. Uh, and sadly the Popeyes in the area was falling off and it's actually worse than KFC now. Oh, that's terrible. That hurts my soul. Um, I'm sorry, bro. I really am. At least it's not raising canes. At least it's not raising canes. You have actual (laughs) chicken with seasoning, uh, to it. Uh, so Count your blessings, I guess. Uh, <laughs> if you get to have a Whataburger, Val, I'm going to tell you two, two my, my favorite things. One, 
a bacon water burger. Bam. I do light onion. They put a little bit of onions in my for me. Light onion, bacon water burger, and then the honey butter chicken biscuit. Woo! Yes, Lord. That is a blessing. And fun fact, they start serving breakfast at 11 p.m. So I'm just saying, late night. It's good. It's pretty good to have. I'm just, it's just a thing, <laughs> bro. What's what's the name of the burger that I dig from them? That's like the super worst for you. Oh, it's the like, patty melt, my dude. Yes, that, sir. Oh, yes, is, sir. The patty melt is so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what a burger! If you like to sponsor us, reach out to us. Visit our website, <laughs> geekdevotions.com. <laughs> I, I'm I'm over here testifying, like I'm letting my pen, inner Pentecostal off the chains. I'm like, yes, sir. Uh, Dell says, or John can move down here and have better access to what burger. Well, that's hey, the thing I'll too. Let, I'll let you try to have that argument with my wife. <laughs> uh, Val says we do have raising canes in the area, and it's more popular than the Popeyes. That's oh, you poor, poor man. Uh, it's popular because you live with a bunch of Yankees. I'm sorry, but it's true. Sir. And, um, Sir. They don't know Sir. what flavor is. Sir. Yes. Take that back. You've been here. You know You know a better way. I knew a better way before <laughs> I came there. Uh, Del says, quit with the, co- the product placement. <laughs> All right. So Celeste was super excited about this pod- about this cosplay. I don't know anything about it. But she's a character from a book that Celeste loves. And the fact that Celeste recognized it, this lady was super hyped also. So that was a cool, sweet moment. Uh, Bob says, pop, yes. Very slow here. <laughs> They're slow everywhere. Uh, Canes equals don't go. Uh, Celeste goes, oh, Fourth Wing is the name of the book this girl's from. So, all right. So that was day two. I- I will say that as a book nerd, I can understand the fact that it's a lot more exciting when you can connect with someone on that geekery level. Right. Just just due to the fact that it's so niche that it's it's like finding somebody that has the same tattoo as you. It, ah. it, it, there's it's almost a brotherhood on that level. I respect that. I respect that. All right. So last day, ladies and gentlemen. So let's not open the booth before anybody got in. First people came up, a dude dressed up as Gengar, and this guy is supposed to be uh, John Wick. I was like, cool, dig it. I can super, see that. Super cool guys, super chill. They're like, like literally, it's like first thing in the doors open on Sunday morning. This one right here, ladies and gentlemen. So the lady who had the tribbles, this is her. She's the trash lady from Labyrinth. Uh, okay. I was trying to, uh, cause you cannot tell who or what is inside that thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty cool. What's funny was when she rolled up and as you guys can see down the corner, this pup here named Venom was like, what the crap is happening here, guys? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. Valendra says it's a popper. It's popular because the Popeyes has fallen off track. They just don't care. They give you the wrong food and smaller portions than they are out of half of their stuff and it's uh isn't cooked crispy it's mushed oh that's terrible that's a sad day man oh dude that's Gross. not good yep um speaking of food i just found out uh shreveport has the last remaining long john silvers in louisiana apparently they just rebuilt it and uh i'm like cool I'm, i like their chicken <laughs> hey that's awesome it's gonna get run out of town but that's awesome yeah their chicken tastes better than canes well, that's there. my shoe tastes better than Kane's. <laughs> All right, so uh, this the, the this young lady right here, this is the person that was playing the character from The Last of Us, Ellie, uh, doing a gentleman Anakin, and this was cool and just a really good cosplay. She was actually helping out with another booth there at the con, apparently. Uh, all right, now John, this is a this is for you. You're an '80s kid, mm-hmm. more so than me. This uh, couple here, do you recognize their cosplay? I, w- I want to say it looks familiar, but I can't put a finger on it, and it's bugging me because I can't put my finger on it. Well, to be fair, um, uh, my dude's pants are not as tight as they should be, but they are the couple. Is from he supposed Labyrinth. to be David Bowie and the girl from the Labyrinth? <laughs> yes. Okay, he had he doesn't have the right hair for it. That's the reason why I wasn't like Homeboy needed to get himself like a silver fro wig <laughs> because that. No, that's not it, homie. I, I mean, <laughs> everything else is great, but unless you're going to shave that 
goatee off and put that wig on, bro. You're just all you are is the Scarlet Pumpernel. <laughs> Either way, I thought I was cool. I stopped her because I was like, "Ma'am, you are you your 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 dress is gorgeous. Your 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 husband boyfriend it's very sharp. But what are you guys?" And she they said they were from Labyrinth. I was like, "Okay, cool. I get that. That's cool." Uh, Val says, "I figured her, uh, her out as the girl right away. I just didn't recognize him at all. That's fair." <laughs> Bob goes, dang, that dress absolutely rung the bell, right? Here's another picture of him. All right, so this is a young lady. She's dressed up as a character from My Hero Academia, and uh, she made all the stuff here. She got a ketchup bottle, which is uh, you know holds blood and stuff. That's a fun thing, uh, but it was a good one. Uh, this is a picture I drew for uh, Josh Martin, who is the uh, voice of Majin Buu from Dragon Ball, but he's also in a Beastie Boys uh, cover band so I did a Beastie Boos and I put th uh, the three Majin Boos that uh, he plays Kid Boo uh, Majin Boo and Evil Boo and so that was something I did uh, Geek 1 Geek 2 this is cool these guys are actually uh, ministers in our area and they saw us and stopped by the booth and said hi uh, I just love the fact that it's Geek 1 Geek 2 I think that's funny that's genuinely a, a funny thing to me all right now, John, these guys right here, I need to know, do you recognize their cosplays at all? Because they're kind of on point. That's Reagan Arataka and uh, Shigeru. Uh, Shige I forget Shigeru's last or family <laughs> name. But yes, it's from Mob Psycho 100. You can't, you can't not mob me, dude. I, <laughs> I literally, I literally spent two hundred dollars on Mob Psycho stuff at the con like i blew my entire budget in five minutes yeah that was impressive <laughs> don't don't come to me for financial advice because i will make you bankrupt <laughs> oh my gosh well they did a great job with these <clears throat> this is michael stanley and his family michael's one of our devoted geeks really cool guy uh, they've been supporting us for for several years now they're part of uh, game warriors gaming for a cause and uh they came by the booth uh Last year they got the shirt, and this year they came a guy and got the hat, and uh, just genuinely nice people. And uh, this is what I love about this con, John, is we make connections with people who are just they're just nice folks. Like honest, honestly, my favorite my favorite part of the con, and like for people who've met me in real life, I'm not an easy person to get to know because when one if I don't know you and I'm around you, I'm going to shut up and I'm right. not going to talk to you. Uh, but the cool thing about working the geek devotions group, and I think it's one of my favorite parts of it is that everybody, the, everybody who comes to the table, like the table is, a, is like, you know, when you're playing games with friends and you're like, all right, I'm on home base. I'm right. safe here. Like, like your table's like home base for so many people and everybody right. knows that it's a safe place. And if they come up, they're willing to chat and just be like genuinely cool people. So I like could, and I came to GeekCon, like, this isn't something I talk about. I don't talk about my mental health in front of strangers too often. But, like, I, I literally had a bit of a breakdown prior mm. to coming to GeekCon because I had a lot of personal stuff that all came together all at once. And I just kind of broke. Right. Um, so I, I was a little bit fragile coming down this last year. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> and uh, it was really good because for as much as... I wanted to be present to help you guys and speak life into people by doing that and seeing people react to being able to, to seeing people react to my attempts to try to speak life into them, whatever we're talking about, mm -hmm. they were able to speak life back into me. And it was, sort it was sort of a, a mutually beneficial sort of situation, I think. That's and cool. I, so I, cause you, you had asked me at the time, you know, what's your favorite part of geek con? And I, I couldn't really put like words into it, to right. put words to it. Cause I, I, you know, at the time I was still con crud. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, still working but, through it all. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm still processing a lot and, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm still exhausted, but yeah, it, it was pretty much that. Like the best parts of working these, working these are the stuff that you don't pay to take home. Yeah. Although 
the entire series of Mob Psycho 100 is a close second. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Oh, man. Val Lindros, by the way, he says, I met you and I got to know you pretty well. So he, he enjoyed getting to meet you. Yeah, uh, but but Val, you had the Dallas seal of approval. And I trust <laughs> Dallas implicitly because he's hetero house husband number one. <laughs> I haven't heard that phrase in a while. I thought we'd gotten past it. Oh, Sir, my gosh. no. <laughs> you and i you and i are caught to to quote lady gaga you and i are caught in a rad bromance <laughs> that's funny oh my gosh so i like Val. he's a good guy too oh my gosh all right so this young lady right here came up to our booth uh got to see her i met her years ago when she was a teenager in high school and uh uh, she wasn't part of my church or anything like that. She's a young lady that I met and got to connect with a little bit. And she's a joy to see every year. She's got this great smile here. And so she's just super, super sweet. Um, uh, me with Ichigo Corsa, uh, John interviewing some people, which by the way, if you want to hear what happened in that conversation, check out the latest episode of the bottom shelf. Uh, it is up in the feeds right now. I think I remember what movie she said. I think she was the I, I think she was the one that was talking about as above so below. Yes, she was that person. She was. She was indeed. Uh this one right here, this is a uh, Mike who was frustrating the mess out of me. I know this guy. I met him several years ago. He's connected with Michael Stanley and the gaming uh the guy the say words Dallas. Uh uh Game Warriors Game for God. But uh he's like he was like laughing cuz I have no idea who he is behind the mask. I'm like I don't know who you are. <laughs> so finally it made sense. But he's a cool guy. Uh, also, if you want to hear about his opinions about, about bad movies, check out the bottom shelf. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, that guy that John recognized completely and utterly and knew exactly what video game he was from right off the bat. That was, that, was, that, was the, uh, that was the key that was the key point of the Bible study tonight, Dallas, is don't be a jerk. I confessed my sin. Oh my gosh. So again, just a cool guy. Really, really nice dude. Uh, this is uh, Jillian. She was the one person dressed as the character from Little Nightmares. She was dressed up as a character from um, Gravity Falls, I believe. Yeah. And uh, uh, super sweet girl. Uh, it's amazing how much a wig changes w uh, the way you look, though. Like I right when she walked up, I'm like, "Who are you?" And then it clicked. I was like, "Oh crap! You're you're Jillian. What's up?" <laughs> uh, Dale says his fury may prove fatal. Yes. <laughs> Lizzie <funny>. Borden. Yes. <laughs> Tail. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's funny. Uh, this is a cool guy right here. This is a guy that Branson interviewed. We the episode's not up, but we Branson and I walked around interviewing people, asking them about um, their 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 uh, their geeky hot take, right? And he had a really cool answer. Again, it'll be in the feed. Hopefully next week. Really nice guy. Uh, he has a really cool fan theory. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the way that he views Batman and Arkham. Uh, Asylum. It's it's pretty fascinating. It's a pretty cool little take. I wouldn't mind seeing Elseworlds using his take uh, at all. But he's a really nice guy. He's a mental health advocate, and uh, he's helping to. I think he's got to go work for the VA before too long. Um, Bob goes Riddler or Matt Lesko. I don't know who Matthew Lesko is. Dell goes. He's a questionable person. <laughs> Uh, oh, this is Les and I, and this is a young lady right here. Uh, she's a young lady that we've known for years. Very sweet young lady. Uh, she hung out at our booth all day on Sunday. And then this is uh, us and the guys in a very hot sun after we did a mad rush to get everything out of off the con floor and out of the out of the convention center. Uh, how was that uh, cleanup for you, John? Fast and furious, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like they were like, okay, the con's over. Get out. <laughs> like you've never seen so many, uh, you've never seen so many of the, uh, exhibitors trucks pull up in front of the convention center. I'm like, there's gotta be a better way to do it than just get out before we turn the lights off on you. Oh my gosh. It was a mad rush, dude. But I was thankful for the team for helping us out to get everything loaded up and out the door. And, uh, and, uh, man, we were rocking and rolling with it. Uh, Val says about the other guy, he goes, he's the guy that who uh, 
to sell you a book about how to get money from the government. I remember that that commercial, John. Holy crap, John! You just slowly like gave me like a flashback right there. Memory unlocked. That's crazy. Uh, Dell says you don't have to go home, but you have to get out of here. Yeah, that's basically exactly. Like. <laughs> Valandro just sent my mind down a pure moods rabbit hole now with that <laughs> with that infomercial. Right. Uh, Barry, Barry, what's going on? Welcome to the chat. Uh, Anime gamer, what's going on? Love the channel. I wish I could. I wish I had Christian Wee friends on PlayStation who played anime games. Oh, I'm sorry, anime gamer. Welcome to the thing. Hey, you're welcome to check out our Discord. We don't. Uh, we don't have a lot of people who play a lot of stuff on PlayStation, but you're welcome to hang out with us and be part of our Discord and part of our our community if you want to. Anime. And gamer. there is a friend exchange on there, so if there are PlayStation people on there, you can throw yourself out there, and people will be like, "Hey, I'll." hook up with you or whatever True story if you go to our website geekdevotions.com let me just pull it up here geekdevotions.com up here uh is one of these is a link to our discord i think it's uh i say that i don't have a link to our discord up here well that's just silly of me hold on one second let me get pull. let me get the discord out and let me get an invite invite people and copy all right, Anime Gamer, here is a link to our Discord channel. Come hang out on our Discord. Uh, ah, as, as long as you're Valentro cool, just threw it out there. Oh, my dude, Valentro. Problem is, Val, uh, that only hits the uh, the Twitch side. They're on YouTube side, but thank you. Uh, I need to rework my stuff so it does stuff on the, on the YouTube side. Val says, thankfully, your booth is not a merch vendor, so uh, do not have so much. Yeah, it's true, it's true. We were selling mm -hmm. shirts. I was and, about to say there is some merch, but we don't. That's not kind. That's not really the focus of what we're doing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but like I said, if you want to buy one of our shirts, let us know. Uh, They're pretty slick. I got one. Yeah, uh, and dude, Rick wore his shirt to church Sunday. I was like, my dude, look at all fresh. I appreciate the support. Uh, anime girl gamer says, "I will join." Thank you so much. God bless you and your wife. Yeah, absolutely, anime. Hey, anime, how did you find us? Uh, have we met you in person? Did we meet you at GeekCon? How did you find us? Uh, here's Celeste with a, a guy from the library, apparently, that you guys had talked to, and he's, I gotta connect with him later. Yeah, 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 he's, uh, he's the first guy you'll hear on the, uh, oh, the bottom shelf. Okay. Um, him and Kevin, uh, I, I met him when I was wandering around with Kevin, he's from the Shreve Memorial Library, and, uh, super cool guy, he has his own, uh, small films uh project that he's just starting up as a filmmaker he, so him and kevin were talking uh shop quite a bit so nice. if you want to see what he's into it's ejs um go check that out he was super into the idea of christians showing out and being geeks so when we told him we were with uh, geek devotions he showed up and grabbed all the cards he could to, so he might even be listening to this or some of the other podcasts so if you're there my dude you're cool in my book very cool uh anime gamer says wives are a good thing i love mine good deal because no i've never met you i've been sub for a while oh, very cool well thank you for commenting on the live stream appreciate it my friend all right uh here's john talking with uh uh lloyd and now anya uh she changed this uh, to anya for the last day uh and then this yeah, is... I was trying to I was trying to get my dude to be on the bottom shelf, but he's like, <laughs> I'll have to come back for that. And he never yeah. did. Oh yeah. Oh man. He, you would like he's into D D. Like they have a they play D D at their church mm -hmm. uh, on a regular basis. So uh this is just before John interviewed these guys here uh for the bottom shelf. And this is John interviewing Deadpool for the bottom shelf. I think Huh? this picture once yep that's that's the one i think that you used for the cover photo isn't it it is this is the one i used for the cover photo for the episode and so and then here's celeste buying stuff and then here's this this is a cool moment branson here is talking with a former student of his and uh it was it was just a cool moment branson ran to a couple of students actually during the weekend and for him it was neat just getting to meet, see them and talk with them and the fact that they were wanting to engage with them, like it became a really great ministry moment for him. And uh, that was a, it was pretty cool to see all that take place. I'm telling you, man, there, there's moments where you're just talking into people and 
that connection feeds back so hard into you that it, it you can like just dine on that experience for months. No, totally. Totally. Uh, here's a picture of John and our friend Livy hanging out in the oh, booth. Okay. So there's a story to this picture and Kevin got mad at me for it, which just makes <laughs> me laugh even, even more. So like literally right before this picture was taken, me and Livy, we, because they were playing bad romance by, uh, <laughs> by Lady Gaga on the overhead on the overhead. And, um, you know, I, I have a soft spot for really terrible pop music yeah and and so livy and i we were just sitting there bopping like we were dancing and singing along we had a whole routine going on and i looked up i looked out the corner of my eye saw kevin getting his camera ready to take a picture of it <laughs> so right when he held it up i turned and just deadpanned him. <laughs> oh it was funny that was funny stuff right there but again it made a great moment for for Liv. like that's again that's that's why I appreciate you being there, man. Is like you you were part of the team as a whole. You were helping us to minister, minister to her, is other people who were there. Uh, here's Liz with her berserk cosplay after winning the event. Um, she's got a little smirk there, smiling. Yeah, she she was glowing after she won, man. And that's pretty close to the pose that she hit on the stage. Although on the one on stage, she had more of her uh, she had more of a game face going. Like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Odell says, I hope that we can somehow get the retro rewind guys and, or the cell cast guys here for 2025. That'd be pretty cool. That'd I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw this out here. I've known Dallas and Celeste le for less amount of time and I've already gone twice. So, <laughs> oh man, uh, this is, I appreciate, uh, Kevin and I stuck around. So after the, the thing, like she was like, people were like talking to her like crazy and I was like, I just want to say congratulations. And so, uh, shout to Kevo for getting the shot of, of her and I together. This is pretty neat for me. So, but that, ladies and gentlemen, are all the pictures from GeekCon 2024 that we have for you. And we appreciate you guys hanging out. But, ladies and gentlemen, it is late for me. Wait, 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 Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. You, you, you managed to get out of everybody what their favorite part of GeekCon was. But you have yet to state yours, sir. I think I talked about it on Com Talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Was this Com Talk? No, but I talked about it on Com Talk. <laughs> push, push your show rather than a real relationship, Dallas. <laughs> no, no. For me, uh, man, the the highlight for me at GeekCon is always just the relation, the the, the interactions with people, having the opportunity to just love on folks for a moment. Um, just the few people that we talked to that just, just needed friends and we were able to be that for a while. That, those are moments that, that were special to me the entire time. And so that, that's my, my favorite thing from the event. So, well, if you were at geek con, we want to hear from you. What'd you think of it? Did you like it? Did you have fun? What was your favorite part of the con? Let us know. Uh, that being said, Jevin, I have got to sign off because again, it's late at night and I have to, uh, go to work tomorrow. <laughs> so I Hopefully I get to go to work tomorrow. So yeah, hopefully. So for those of you guys listening, thank you so much for being part of the, of the stream. We love you guys so much till next time. Stay devoted.